Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Ubiquiti's line of Unify 24 port switches. That's gonna be the US 24 and then the US 24 250 watt. Now this is the PoE version and this is the non-PoE version. Now it's interesting because I don't think I've ever done a video on these switches specifically on this channel, but they're kind of a staple in the, our Ubiquiti setups. Anytime we're doing a big install, very often we have at least one 24, if not more 24 port switches. And uh, these things are great. I mean, I, you know, knock on wood, I don't think we've ever actually had one of these fail. Uh, I have had some of the 48 port PoE version switches fail, probably a handful of those over the years, but I can't recall a single time that any of these have failed. Uh, let me know your experience with them in the comments below. Okay, so let's talk about the specifics with these two switches. They are actually identical in their switching capacity. Both of these switches have the ability to do 24 gigabits per second of non-blocking throughput and 52 gigabits per second uh, of switching capacity. They are both rack mountable. Uh, the US24 is significantly quieter than the 250 watt PoE switch because of the PoE capability requires uh, additional fans and there's different fan levels. Uh, there's four levels of fan speeds that can run in the 24 250 watt. Other than that, there are some minor differences in terms of the cosmetics of these two switches. For instance, this one has the rack mounting ears built in, whereas the standard non-PoE version does not have the ears. It's made to be more of a desktop or rack mount form factor, whereas with this 250 watt PoE switch, it's kind of assumed that you're gonna be putting it into a network rack. The pricing on these switches is $192.99 for the 24 port non-PoE version, the US24, and the 250 watt version uh, is $379.98. That's, as of, uh, that's on amazon.com as of today, the, the day that I'm recording this video. Now, the 500 watt variant of this PoE, 24 port PoE switch is $528.49. However, I don't think we've ever implemented any of the 500 watt switches. And I'll talk about that in a little bit when we actually get into uh, more detail on this one. But let's start by opening up our US24 and seeing what comes inside the box here. As far as what I'm doing with these switches, uh, this one, this US24 is going to be installed into one of my client's offices tomorrow. And then this US24 250 watt is gonna be my own personal new switch that uh, I'm gonna set up on my desk over here. And hopefully the noise isn't uh, gonna bug me too much. Uh, right now I have a regular edge switch light and then a an eight port Ubiquiti uh, 150 watt switch. And the noise is fine, but this one is going to be a little bit noisier. Okay, so inside the box of the US24, we have your rack mount ears. Again, these ones are detachable as opposed to the other switch that we're gonna take a look at. And then you have the power cable and some screws for the rack mount ears, and then your quick start guide. Let's go ahead and pop it out of here. Uh, then we also have a set of screws to actually mount this into a 19 inch rack, and also a little packet of feet. If you're not gonna be mounting it, if you wanna just put, it, uh, put feet on the bottom of the switch. Okay, so here we go. Uh, again, we've got 24 gigabit ports and then two SFP ports. Now these are SFP, they are not SFP+, plus, meaning that they are one gigabit fiber ports. And uh, that's really about all there is to it other than there is a console cable, your power, and then a little reset hole on the back of the switch. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in and get it fired up while I open up the other switch as well. There is also a separate switch in the back here I didn't notice this before, but there is a 24 volt DC power input back here as well. So it looks like you can, uh, you can run 25 volt DC uh, into this switch as well. That's kind of nice. Okay, that is booting up. I've got another little Ubiquiti switch right under here. I've got a uh, switch 860 watt, which I'm gonna use to connect this one into my network so that I can adopt it to the Unify site that it needs to be adopted to. And we're gonna plug it into port one. 
just like so. All right, let's open up uh, this beast over here. This is the 24 250 watt. And like I said, this one is my personal one now. So I'm very happy to get this switch because I can definitely use the capacity. I've got so much going on in this office all the time. I am constantly having to rewire and you know change things around and now I don't have to worry about that. So in this one, you get basically all the same stuff. You get your power cord, you get your quick start guide, uh, you get the rack mount equipment, but you don't get the ears because the ears are already attached. So your ears are already attached. This thing is just beautiful. Same ports, 24 gigabit ports, and then two standard one gigabit SFPs on the back. Uh, we don't have that DC power option, probably because this one takes a lot more power, uh, but we do have the standard Molex and a console cable in the back. Uh, now my first switch over here is a white, solid white status. That means that it is ready to adopt. All right, so plugged in, uh, you can tell right away that the 24 port PoE is a lot louder. If you look at the fan holes as well, there's a vent on the side here, but I don't see a fan and a vent on the other side of the US-24 as well, but there's actually only one fan hole right here in the back. So I think it only has a single fan on this US-24, whereas the US-24 250 watt has two fans on the right side and two fans on the left side. So this thing is you know, quadruple the number of fans, which is uh, what leads to the noise. And then also the fans uh, have up to four different speeds that they can be running at. All right, now plug in the US 24 250 watt to the network. Okay, so I am in my unified dashboard. And what I can see here, if I click on devices, is that we have two devices pending adoption. Now this is a hosted unified controller, but my Unify application is on my local network. So it picked these up as devices that are waiting for adoption. And then you can adopt them to one site or another, depending on what site is currently selected in the Unify application. So the first one we're gonna do, since I'm currently on my home site, the one that I use for uh, my office here, is the Switch 24 PoE 250 watt. I can see it right there. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna click Adopt. And then we'll go back here and that is now adopting. Now we're going to go to my dashboard. I'm gonna switch sites to a different site. This is the client site that's gonna get this US 24 tomorrow. Okay, and now I am on the client site in Unify. We're gonna click Devices again. We're gonna click this Switch 24 and we're gonna to scroll to the bottom and click Adopt. While the US-24 is adopting, I'm gonna flip back over to my own personal site. And if I click on Devices, I can now see that the US-24 250 watt is in provisioning status. If I click on it, I should be able to change the name to something a little bit more useful. Configure, alias, and we will just call this, instead of the MAC address, we're just gonna call this US-24 250 watt and we're going to save that <clears throat> and there we go so we are now connected this switch is fully connected we can see the ip address mac address firmware version temperature fan level is at 50 i'm assuming that means 50 percent memory uses memory usage load average etc etc all right let's pop over to my other site and make sure that this one has completed adoption devices and it is in provisioning status i'm going to once again configure it we're going to change the name us dash 24. Now this is going to let me know which device this is. If they had multiple US 24s at this location, this location does not. But if they did have multiple US 24s, I would give this a little bit more interesting description than just the model number of the switch. Um, you know, I'd say US 24 upstairs or downstairs or, you know, phone closet or, or something that describes a little bit better which actual switch I'm talking about. And after that is saved, this US 24 has now been adopted as well. Now on the 24 250 watt, I get this question a lot is, is when do you need to go for the 500 watt variant versus the 250 watt variant? And my answer to that is almost never. Right, so imagine a situation where you were using a fiber uplink to get power or to get network to the switch. So you have all 24 ports freed up for PoE devices, such as phones or access points or something like that. 
you're still barely, it's, it would be tough to hit, to go over 250 watts or even close to 250 watts. So for instance, uh, the UAP ACHD, that's the big daddy access point from Ubiquity Networks. It's 802.3 AT PoE plus power. It sucks a lot of power and I plugged it in and it's gonna be pulling about 5.5 watts for that big access point, okay? So even if you populated all of the ports, that's still only 132 watts total. So you could have 24 UAP ACHDs plugged into one of these and you still have 100 watts left over for the switch itself and any other PoE devices. Other things like phones. So phones are between three and four watts. So they're even less than that UAP ACHD. And then for instance, the dome camera, the uh, or the G3 camera, the UVC G3 dome and the standard G3 bullet cameras are also gonna be pulling about three to four watts maximum. So again, you can really pack these things with PoE devices and not hit that 250 watt upper limit. So it's very, very rare that we sell the 500 watt variant of this switch. All right, some quick sound measurement here. Uh, when I'm speaking normally, the decibel meter is jumping between about 75 to 83 dB. And uh, if I just hold it up high, sort of away from these fans, it's giving me a reading of 44 dB. Now, if I pulled it right next to these fans that are coming out of the US 24250 watt, I get a reading of 64.9 dB. So that is essentially 20 dB higher than when I've got it up here, sort of just measuring the ambient room noise, which kind of makes sense. So the four levels on the data sheet, the four sound levels on the data sheet for the US PoE 250 watt our level zero is 9.1 dB, level one, 14.2 dB, level two, 16.8 dB, and level three, 21.2 dB. So it looks like we're sort of right between levels two and three uh, right now as it's just sitting here idle. Ambient noise in the room with neither of these switches running is about 42 dB. And the reading on the fan side of the US 24 is about 55 dB. So figure it's about a 13 dB increase when I've got this microphone sitting right next to the fan uh, over the ambient volume of the room. Okay, so here we have my US 24250 watt all tucked in and put into place. Now I did make a couple of modifications here. Uh, I cannibalized the little rubber feet from the US 24 because I'm not going to need those. I'm going to be rack mounting that US 24. So I used the rubber feet for the US 24250 watt uh, just to get it off of this table just a tiny bit. And uh, I also took some rubber feet that I had laying around from something else, who knows what, they were just sitting around, and I added them to my USG. So I don't know if you can tell here, Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit. There we go, get that in focus so you guys can see it. So I put these extra feet on the USG in order to lift the USG off of the US 24250 watt a little bit more than it would be lifted off normally. Uh, now, one other thing that I forgot to mention is that the Unify Switch 24250 watt is not only uh, 802.3 AF PoE and PoE Plus, meaning that it can do 802.3 AF and 802.3 AT, you can also set the ports to 24 volt passive individually. So I have one port down here, it's port number two, and that has been set to 24 volt passive in order to power a nano station that I've got running uh, elsewhere on my property here. And finally, we have my DB meter sitting right here. It's running and with the, without me speaking, the measurement in DB of the Unify Switch 24 250 watt sitting right here on my desk is between 51 and 52 dB. So again, not too bad. It's definitely louder than the Ed Switch 24 Lite that I had sitting here previously, and hopefully it won't drive me uh, bananas <laughs> with the extra volume right next to where I'm working. Okay, so after days of running with this switch right next to me while I'm working, it's definitely too loud. So the fans are just too loud. It's distracting me while I'm working. I'm even picking it up on audio recordings when I'm recording videos for the channel. And so we're gonna have to come up with a different solution for the fans. So the first thing I did is I popped open the case. And one thing that I found out that's pretty interesting is there actually are only two fans in the US 24250 watt. Let's take a look at this. 
So here's the device open and here's the two fans on the side. Now from what I understand these are 12 volt fans. They run from here, they've got these long cables that run all the way over and they plug in here and here. Now there are two additional fan headers which I assume are maybe for either the, they use this same board for the 48 port uh, or maybe the 200, uh, the 500 watt version of this has four fans. I'm not exactly sure, but you'll notice that there's two holes on the side for the fans over here that aren't being used. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two fans and I'm just going to move them over to this side, right? So the fans will be blown out that direction and, you know, theoretically some of the noise will be reduced just by having the fans pointing this way instead of this way. So we're going to try that first. I'm also going to order two brand new replacement fans. I believe these are 40 millimeter fans, 12 volts. I just got to make sure the connector is the same and maybe I'll get some good, you know, Noctua fans to replace these that will hopefully be, uh, run a lot quieter. So let's go ahead and move these over here first and foremost. All right, there we go. So I've moved the fans from the left side of the switch over to the right side of the switch, and uh, we'll see if that helps with the noise. Okay, so I have received my Noctua fans to replace the fans in the US 24 250 watt. And unfortunately they sent me, I think they sent me the wrong version. So these fans are 12 volts. And this one, as you can see, says five volts. Now I looked it up, on the product that I ordered on Amazon, all of the comments say, yes, this is 12 volts. Uh, and some of the other comments say, well, it's five volts, but it works fine in a 12 volt system. So I'm not sure if their model numbers are screwed up or if someone at Amazon or whatever distributor sent this to me, screwed up and sent me the five volt version instead of the 12 volt version. But we're gonna roll the dice and install these anyways. In worst case scenario, I'm out like 26 bucks for two of these fans. Okay. so. Uh, that's my next step is to go ahead and install these fans. Now, previously I was seeing 65 to 67 dB when the fan level is running at level 70 off of the US 24250 watt. So we're going to check and see uh, when we're running at fan level 70 what it sounds like with these Noctua fans. Uh, that's our next step. All right, on to the install. All right, so fan replacement was successful. The installation process was relatively easy. It took me about 15, 20 minutes to do in total. The only problem that I ran into is that the Noctua fans use a larger screw than the stock fans that come in the US 24250 watt. So basically I had to take some extra time to drill out the holes in order to get the screws through to actually fasten the Noctua fans to the inside of the switch. In case you're wondering, that was a 3 16 drill bit that I had to use to, uh, to make those screw holes bigger. And once I did that, it worked perfectly fine. I also had to use the two pin adapter that came with the Noctua fans. That worked perfectly fine. So they're three pin fans by default, but they do come with a two pin adapter, which was perfect. And they are working fine, even though they are the five volt version. What about the sound? Now, unfortunately, it got louder. <laughs> so I thought it would actually be quieter, it's not. So when it's running at the level 70, which it actually is right now, I can hear it. I don't know if it's coming through on the mic, but I can certainly hear it. Um, the fan level previously with the stock fans was between 65 to 70 dB. Now that it's running with the Noctua fans, the fan level is 69 to 71 dB. So it sort of stayed about the same or actually increased just a little bit. The one thing that might be a problem are the grates that are on the side of the switch because those actually might be restricting airflow. So there's two things that I might try next, which is actually just cutting out those grates and uh, just letting the air sort of flow straight through uh, one big hole rather than having grates in the side. The other thing that I might do is actually attach it under here. So I've got this like 1U mounting bracket that is up underneath my this uh, side desk. I used to have my phone system there, but uh, since it's not being used, I'll probably just switch the, uh, the switch underneath this desk and being a little bit lower underneath the desk and pointed at the wall hopefully will make me not notice the noise quite as much. But yeah, this thing's decently loud and uh, I can hear it. I mean, I just much prefer to not notice the switch, but 
you know, if it gets too much, if it's too annoying, I'm just going to use this switch somewhere else or get it, get it to a client or something like that, and then go back to the old way of doing things, which was my uh, Edge Switch 24 Lite. Uh, or actually, I'll probably have to buy a new one since that switch uh, had a problem with the LEDs. Uh, and then I'll just use a, uh, you know, the 8-port uh, 150-watt uh, switch for devices as I need it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you think about these switches, especially the uh, the process with the fans on this US24? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a... I mean, we can't really end this video without cutting some holes in this thing, right? All right, let's do it. Alright, well if I didn't void the warranty before, I've definitely voided the warranty now. So after all that, the decibel level of the Noctua fans came down to about where it was, maybe a little bit quieter than it was with the stock fans with the grates still intact. But uh, again, it is still decently loud and I'll probably end up moving this switch underneath my desk to help a little bit more. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Thank you.